Today we're going to discuss the confidentiality of a patient's medical records uh, from both the perspective of the criminal um, view as well as how um, the Texas rules of evidence affect um, the confidentiality of patient records in the civil arena. Um, initially, there is no um, doctor-patient privilege under 509 of the Texas Rules of, of Criminal Evidence um, that protects the confidentiality of communications between the patient and his or her physician, um, with one exception. Uh, if a patient is being treated for substance abuse or alcohol abuse, or in fact is really is receiving information from a doctor uh, or anyone affiliated with the doctor uh, if, for the purposes of uh, treatment or rehab for um, alcohol and or substance abuse, that, that information uh, is the sole exception and cannot be used in a criminal prosecution. Um, we also have the so-called HIPAA Act, uh, which uh, parallels to a degree um, the uh, civil doctor-patient privilege that does exist with a few exceptions. Under the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1976, otherwise known as HIPAA, uh, it uh, specifies that there are uh, a coverage of confidentiality uh, between uh, information related by the patient to the doctor and his or her treatment of that individual. Um, generally speaking, that also goes to the records that the doctor uh, may in fact generate uh, on behalf of uh, the patient in consultation. The HIPAA Act covers uh, what is known as covered entities, and those covered entities are uh, a health care plan, um, the health care provider, and a health clear clearinghouse. Uh, the health care plan is in and of itself um, able to be explained just by sheer definition. Health care provider includes um, doctors, psychologists, dentists, um, anyone engaged in the medical profession that uh, treats patients. Um, the healthcare clearinghouse uh, basically uh, is an administrative insurance related in, uh, situation. Um, those entities can in fact be compelled by court subpoena uh, or a court order to turn over uh, specific information to the court for either an administrative proceeding or a criminal proceeding. Um, the uh, entity is not in and of itself protected. That information can also be provided to uh, the judicial procedure, uh, proceeding by way of consent of the patient uh, and the patient may limit um, the amount of information as far as the consent is concerned um, that is provided uh, by way of um, that individual's consent. Um, it's important to note that in the civil arena there are exceptions where uh, HIPAA uh, does not apply and that would be for instance when a doctor would be sued by a patient from malpractice, where there might be a grievance uh, filed on behalf of uh, uh, the patient against the doctor. Uh, and uh, those are uh, two of uh, multiple exceptions that permit the disclosure of uh, patient uh, uh, privilege communication. Uh, now, let's, let's look at a situation that um, uh, develops as a result of a court subpoena. Uh, once, uh, or a court order, 
once a subpoena is issued pursuant to a court order uh, for an individual's medical records uh, to include mental health records and those records are uh, complied with uh, or being the, the entity is complying with the court order and providing those medical records. Does that make those medical records public information? And my response would be no it does not. It does not because the public in and of itself is not a covered entity and as a result the confidentiality still is relates it still relates to the uh, judge uh, or the court that happens to issue the subpoena uh, and those records uh, cannot be made public. The purpose of the HIPAA Act um, and the doctor-patient privilege under 509 um, in the civil arena and again the exception in the criminal case because there is no doctor-patient privilege in the criminal arena. Um, the purpose is to uh, encourage the patient to be forthright with his or her physician uh, so that better medicine may be attained in the treatment of the, of, of the patient. If the patient happens to believe that uh, whatever I tell the doctor is going to end up being made public in some way, shape, or form, obviously that patient is not going to be um, compelled to be as forthright and open with the particular physician. Lastly, uh, there is a common um, belief that uh, if a third party sits in uh, on a doctor-patient consultation or treatment, uh, that that breaks in again civilly uh, breaks the confidentiality of the doctor patient privilege um, not not always and the exceptions of course would be for instance if an interpreter is necessary to sit in uh, to communicate uh, the doctor patient privilege still exists if in fact uh, a member of an individual's family a mother or a father uh, can sit in to help encourage the son or daughter to uh, be forthright with the uh, patient, or pardon me, with the doctor, then, then that third party relationship uh, does not, um, does not, is not violated uh, as a result of the third party sitting in. Um, and, and finally, um, it is the patient's privilege, it is not the doctor's, but the doctor can invoke on behalf of the patient the confidentiality of the doctor-patient privilege, but it has to be on the confidence, it has to be on behalf of the patient. Thank you.